Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about the Type R. All right, how much did I spend? How much did I pay for it? That's the question that I get asked for this, especially on the uh, Type R uh, FK8 group on Facebook and a few people left in comments wanting to know, and I'm sure people wanna know, especially with these prices on these cars, the variation, depending on where you go, you can spend anywhere from $15,000 or if you get lucky, you may be able to pay sticker price, but that is very hard to get. All right, guys, so let's get to the video and we'll talk about that. So first I'm gonna tell you how I started my search and how it began. I'll tell you my journey of how I got this Civic Type R here and then we'll talk about a little bit more of how I paid. I'll talk about how I financed it, everything like that, my monthly payment, all right? That way you guys can know. All right, so I have was always been curious about the Type R. When it came out in 2017, I was like, this is a, when, this sounds like a very car. Now, I know that people think that, first of all, I am strictly BMW. I do love BMWs. I have, I love BMWs. However, for low maintenance costs, you know, I had that Lexus ISF, that was a good car, I think it was a good daily, but then I just, I sold that car, had my regrets, um, but I wanted to move on to something else. And the Type R has always been something I wanted to have, just something like a, like a daily, something that I could drive to work and back, something fun, um, have some power, some great handling, and it checked all the boxes. Now I had this, the F, um, I had the Civic Si, if you guys knew I had that. The Si was a 2014, it was the ninth gen, and it had the power, especially when I drove it on the East Coast, it had the power, but it ran on 93 octane. And out here, it just seemed very sluggish. I think it was just because running on 91 octane or the California grade, it, I just was used to that previous power. Also too, I just wanted to try the Type R, honestly. This, this, there, there was no excuse. I, I could have kept that car, that car's paid off. I could have kept it, but I really wanted to try the Type R. So I kept checking the used market, used market, especially last year, I started really just kind of curious, kind of browsing. And I was finally seeing the prices of them drop down to where they would have been at MSRP price. With MSRP back then was $35,000. Of course, you would expect to pay about $45,000 brand new. Some people were, at the, you know, were getting them for sticker price. It all had to depend on your research. But then it, it, when COVID hit, I was like, I didn't want to buy brand new. I, I just always buy used cars. So I never even research a new, a new car because I feel like it's just a pointless thing that you know it's a depreciation why spend it money on it it's going to drop in value um, i'm never making my money back blah 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 and i decided to, to try um use market and i found some like in the mid to low 30s which i thought okay it's great they weren't local to me but i've never driven a type r yet so i kind of want to feel one out first and then 2020 they started they had this new color i was like great that's a Pretty cool color, and I wasn't seen in person before I really started anything. And this came up unexpected. This happened in May of twenty of, of this year, twenty twenty one. I actually um, went to Honda of Oakland. They had one in inventory. Um, had made a video about that, but they wouldn't let me test drive it. Barely let me see the car. But when I saw the car in person, I saw that color. I was like, "Wow, I gotta have it." They told me they would sell me that car for a sticker price. Um, I think maybe like a five hundred dollar markup they were gonna do. However, they weren't letting me, I couldn't do any test drives. So I'm like, buying a brand new car, haven't, drive it, haven't driven it yet, how do I know if I'll like it yet? So, you know, like I said, I don't know what I made. I made a whole video about this. I put the card up here so you guys, if you don't watch that one. But we did not do anything, and I should have, looking back on it now, I should have went and did it, but I still wasn't sure. Because like I said, the last thing you want to do is feel like you made, made a, a big purchase on something and then decide you don't want to do it. And now, like I said, these cars are the 2020s and up now have a higher starting price because of the Honda sensing things they added, four collision things they added onto the car. And, you know, of course, a few of the tweaks they did. Um, I think I have, um, I think the starting price on these is like $37,000. I think the, with the color premium, I think it's like $400 for the, the this boost blue color. Um, so basically I'm looking at probably like $39,000. But anyway, I decided to just kind of like, well, I don't know, I don't know. Then a buddy of mine, uh, also subscribe, he follows the channel, he says, hey, if you're curious about Type R, there's one at our local CarMax, if you want to test drive it, because you know CarMax is going to like, you know, they just let you drive it. So I test drove one at CarMax, 
it was a 2018. It uh, it only had just under a thousand miles on it. I was just surprised that somebody would have that car that long and that putting me miles on it. Test drove it, fell in love with the car, wanted it. Really stuck. Now I start honing down my search. Now this was in the beginning of summer, middle of summer actually. And I started searching around. I started emailing dealers, emailing dealers, calling them. And I checked out a couple of videos from um, other people seeing what they were getting for. But like I said, people seem like they're, that was the thing. You really had to just kind of find that dealer. So I checked all the dealers in California. I first started my local dealer, tried uh, Concord, Honda. They told me $10,000 um, markup. I tried uh, Vacaville Honda, $10,000 up. I tried Honda and Napa, Kastner Honda. Again, they emailed me back. I actually know you texted me back and told me $15,000. Each one of these dealers, I did say, hey, look, are you guys flexible? Can we negotiate? I'm willing to pay some little premium, but I don't want to pay that much more. How about sticker price? You know, always start lower. You don't want to just see how low you can get them first and see if they meet you in the middle, things like that. But each time I made an offer of sticker price, it was quickly shut down. It was no counter offer. It was like, hey, expect to pay more money. So I'm like, all right. I tried uh, Tracy Honda and I asked him, are you guys marking the cars up? He didn't, he seemed like that, that was, I was going to pay the price. He said, you had blue going coming in. He said, he'd give me the bin number, reserve it, blah, blah, blah. Put my deposit down. I told him I was ready to go. Let's do it. Um, it wasn't, it didn't seem like it was going to happen. He came back and he said, okay, here's a, here's our price. $65,000. I was like, no way in hell that's gonna work out for me. I didn't, I just, I didn't respond back anymore to that. I just said, that's not gonna work. And I, that was it, I, there was no point. Uh, that, that was a very hard no for me. Yeah, like I said, the, the, that, that was absurd to think that I'm gonna pay that much for this car. So I started thinking, okay, here's the used ones. So I found the blue one, it was the, uh, it was a 2019. I prefer the 2019 because I had the volume knob, the physical volume knob. And I was going to, I almost pulled the trigger on it. I was looking around, looking around. Like I said, even though this was my top color, the Boost Blue, uh, this was that darker blue, and I was just kind of playing around with the Carvana, and I was looking at it, and I was like, I don't know. Then I found one in Chicago. Now, I found actually two in Chicago. The one was a 2020 with 5,000 miles, certified pre-owned. This one uh, was at a Honda dealer. I can't remember what's that name. Uh, I can't remember the Honda dealer right now, top of my head. And then the other one was a 2021, 800 miles. So the 2021, they're asking 44. I'm like, okay, that's pretty much a new car, 800 miles on it. And 44, okay, I'm willing to pay that for the price because it seemed like it would be um, kind of comparable to what, I mean, the payment, looking at the grand scheme of things, wouldn't be that much more. I got a brand new car, sort of brand new car, and I never had a car less than um, 30,000 miles. So I said, all right, let's do it. So then he, uh, he says at that point, he writes me up a contract, a bill of sale, and he has, and this, is, this dealer is called uh, Napleton Off Lease. Now, he wrote me up this contract, and now, I want you guys to remember this, the dealer, by the way, because th this, this plays a whole important role of how I tamed this car. So, Napleton Off Lease, they wrote me a contract, add ons, add ons, add ons. I had to use their financing. I couldn't use anything else. I had to buy their add ons. I decided, you know what, we're at $50,000 plus, we're at $54,000. I said, I can't, I can't, this is more than I wanted to spend. Blah, blah, blah. I decided, let's move on. That the other Honda, that 5,000 miles, dropped their price down. Cause they were like 44,000 that Monday, I get a notification on car gurus that they dropped the price, the price drop 40. Um, it was $41,800, 5,000 miles. Great. Let's, let's do it. So I contacted them. We started the process. Now keep in mind guys, I am pre-approved. And this is why I always suggest getting pre-approved for your Honda or any car you buy before you even start your search because you don't want to have any issues with financing anywhere. You know, you know your interest rate. So my interest rate with what I got from USAA was a 2.2%. Um, and I think if I finance within 60 months, I got a 1.8. Uh, 
very um, aggressive rate. And I thought that was, that was pretty, I, they'd be hard to beat. But you know, who knows, if the certified pre-owned, they may give me a new car rate, it could be something else. So I offered to try. Of course, they said they couldn't beat it, but they allowed me to use my financing. Uh, a day goes by, I didn't hear anything back from them. So now I'm starting to think that they must have got a higher offer. I'm calling dealership, calling dealership, and finally said, no, 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 we, we, you know, we got your car, but I can't talk to my, but your dealer's out of the office right now, so he'll contact you the next day. So I'm just thinking like, I don't know what I should do because now they're, they're kind of like, so I'm thinking at this point, I'm probably lose a car. Now I'm playing around Carvana, I'm seeing what Carvana's doing, and Carvana comes back with, um, they had this, this other car, was 20, like I said, this 2019 that had 13,000 miles. Like I said, I almost bought that one. I just, I just decided that I didn't want to, I, wanted, I really, this is where I felt like I really wanted. So I just, I didn't really go through with that, that car. So anyway, I'm waiting for them to hear back, but waiting to hear back, waiting to hear back. I'm getting anxious. I hate that feeling of waiting. I hate knowing that or not knowing anything that's coming. We finally, uh, the other dealer contacts me. Hey, you're interested? Are you interested? That this Napleton off lease is the one that calls me. Napleton says, hey, we can, can, we, can we get your business? What can we do? We still get this car. We really need to move this car. And I said, I am willing to buy the car but I can't do the add-ons. They said, well, unfortunately, we have to give you the add-ons for the price. And I said, well, that's not going to work for me. So I reiterated again, the car is not going to work with the add-ons. Even though I really wanted the 800 mile car, I just, it just wasn't, you know, like I said, I'm not gonna pay more money for extra stuff. And they, it was things like Zylon, it was wheel warranty, wheel and tire warranty, it was um, the VIN etching thing. So anyway, the, Honda dealer, the certified pre-owned with the 5,000 mile 2020, comes back with add-ons again. So I'm just sitting here like, gosh, can't we stop with the add-ons? They want to add on this, they want to add on the, the Xylon, they want to add on this other part, they add on the VIN. I said, okay, take all this stuff off. They finally agreed to take everything off. They said they could not remove the VIN etching because they said it's already been applied. So I had to pay a $300 premium for that. And before I sign anything over, they said, okay, we're gonna send you over the paperwork. Um, we know they took my deposit and I'm thinking, okay, let's, let's Let's get started. And then as I tell them that, the next day, Napleton Off Lease says, okay, here's what we're gonna do for you. We're gonna auction this, our Honda off because we had it for so long. We're going to take the car to auction, but before we do it, we'll offer you our best, our lowest price. I said, okay, what's that? They said 41,900. So remember the car I'm dealing with is 41,800, the 2020 with 5,000 miles. If I can get a 2021, even though there's really not much difference between the 20 and 2021, but the fact that I can get a permission new car, it just seemed like great. And also looking upon pictures, which I didn't realize was one of the pictures I realized was a 2020 I was looking at had curb rash on one of the wheels. So that was already kind of thinking, crap, when that car gets here, I'm gonna get that wheel repaired. And I didn't really want to deal with that. Honestly, I just, I was hoping that, but I didn't notice it until the very last picture and this was after I had already Told them that, so I was thinking to myself, okay, now can I get them to take that price off? But the price, I wasn't gonna buy a car with, with these wheels, they're gonna be expensive, but I, want, I didn't want the car to have curb rash when I get it, I was gonna have something to do fix and get done. So if I'm gonna pay a premium, I'd rather have that off the car or you sell me you know, discount the car even more. So before I got to the negotiations, I said, you know what, dude, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna cancel that deal because I get a new car. So the general manager, Call me again, hey, let's do it. So he's putting pressure on me. So finally, I said, okay, I will buy your car. If you give me a contract with this price, it does not exceed this at the door, show me all the breakdown. So he took pretty much everything off. The only thing, only thing I had to pay for was one add-on, um, but for $41,000, and then he, had, he included the shipping in there. Now shipping, I didn't want to pay for that. I didn't want to finance that, but I decided just to go ahead and put more money down to offset that cost. All right, so we went forward and then a whole week goes by. I didn't hear any, actually two days ago by, I didn't hear any back. So I reach out again. Here we go, it's like, well, I don't know why they disappear. I'm assuming that these guys are negotiating with more, more people, kind of like what I'm doing, right? And I'm sure they're doing what I'm doing. Like I said, it's business, right? They're, they're trying to figure out who can have the highest offer, but they don't want to turn anybody down. So I kind of knew that was, that was kind of happening. I knew what the other dealer was doing and I said, 
all right, Napleton, I said, well, what's going on? You know, what's, why, why are you guys are at the coming back? I said, you guys put pressure on me to do this deal, and now you guys are dragging your feet. I said, my, my car hasn't been in charge yet. I told you I had to deposit. I said, yeah, yeah, no, the car's yours. I just talked to my manager. I was out the office. I'm like, okay, why is it convenient that these guys are always out of the office when I'm starting a deal? You know, that, that's frustrating because when I want to do a deal, I want to do a deal. Let's, let's get it done, finish it up. Wrap it up, but you know, because I, you know, I, I, I want to move on. I don't want to be up, be in one limbo, waiting for a week, especially when we got a state buyer. It's frustrating. So, long story short, um, Napleton called me on that Friday, and they said, "Hey, buddy, uh, we we can't sell that car to you." I said, "Why?" They said, "We turn it, we turn the engine on, the car's knocking." Knocking? Wait. wait. What do you mean? I said the car had 800 miles on it. The car had been sitting there a lot. Why would it be all of a sudden start knocking? Oh, yeah, you know, we, we don't know either. It's just one of those things. Uh, we, 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 can't, we can't retail it, but the car's got to go to Honda, and we, you know, we'll get it all sent there and get taken care of as soon as we do that. Um, yeah, we'll give you a call and let you know, but right now we can't retail it, so uh, that's why you haven't been charged. That's why we haven't, we're trying to figure it out ourselves. I'm sorry, but I know a lie when I'm being told a lie. Just tell me, just be honest with me and tell me you got a higher offer and you just want to cancel my deal. But if you want to play the game, I'll play the game back with you. So I was following up with them. I said, okay, um, let me know, you know, as soon as you can. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, knowing what the car is, you know, send me over everything. Oh, yeah, we definitely will. We'll definitely let, let you know. Meanwhile, I thought, well, you know what? I know I canceled a deal with the other Honda dealer. Let me see if their car is still available. So I contacted them back. Of course, they said their car sold. So now I have no Type R. So I called the other dealer back in Napleton, disguised my number, just, just to see, just to get confirmation. Disguised my number, and I said, hey, I'm just interested in that Type R, blah, blah, blah. And the lady's like, she helped me out. She said, oh yeah, you love that car. I, I, she's like, you know, talking about it. And it turned out that she said, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. I just looked it up and that car looked like it just sold. I said, oh, really, when did it sell? Because I know when I was getting it, when it was selling, she says, no, it actually said just sold yesterday, which had been like that Friday when they called and told me. I'm like, those, those liars. And I was like, all right. I said, okay, thank you very much. Um, I told my dad, my dad's like, why don't you just go for a new car? Try a new car. See where you know, I said, well, I tried new cars. I don't know. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to call every single dealer. I'm going to call a Honda dealer and try to find one. I've called every dealer from like East Coast, middle, Midwest, down to Florida. And it was... I was, like I said, I was, even out, out in the middle of night, New Hampshire, I was getting $15,000 markup for these cars. Now, I had one dealer, they were doing a rally red. Now, I was always going for blue, and I decided, well, if I try red, red is my second choice. I tried for red. Red, I felt better pricing. However, one dealer said they were giving 41000 in Missouri, but they said, you got to be here in person. The car is en route now. When the car gets here, the first person that gets here with the car gets, gets to, basically, early bird gets to warm. I'm can't jump on a plane to fly there to chase a car that someone else is going to be there. All right, I'm not going to do that. That's going to be wasting my time, wasting my money. I'm not doing that. So I just write that out car off. Found a dealer in New Mexico that says, hey, we got a Type R. Um, what's the markup? They said $10,000 markup. I said, okay, can you guys come down? What, what flexibility do you have? Because I know, guys, you know, I can't expect MSRP when dealers are paying premium for trade-in value because they need cars. They need cars. They're going to pay a premium for your car for trade-in or if you sell it. Now, I sold my car to a dealer prior to the start of my, my search. Once they gave me my premium for my car, I can't expect not to, to, to pay. You know, like I said, this, the market's going up. So like I said, I know, I know it's fair. I, I know, and I can't, I can't expect it. Like I said, if you're trading your car in or you're selling your car, you're gonna get more money than you ever have this, this time of year, this, this type of market that we're in. But you can't expect to get all this money and then not want to pay any money. So like I said, I know the days of MSRP are gone. I still ask for it because you may find a dealer. Now, New Mexico dealer, they wanted to charge me lower price. They said they'll do lower price, but they said I had to buy the door edge guards that were on the door. I had to buy the window coverings and things like that. And then they said buy the, the service contract. And by the time I was all said and done, it turned out the price, the out the door price was almost exactly the same. So. As either they dropped the price down to low MSRP, I had to buy the warranties. I had to buy all their uh, coatings and fabric protections and things, and I didn't want to spend that. It, it doesn't make sense. And like I said, I'll, I'll do a certain markup, 
but I'm not gonna do a lot. Found one dealer in Texas. They said they'll do a 5,000 markup. Okay, 5,000 I felt was fair, but then she said you gotta buy some accessories on top of that too. <sighs> All right, I'm not doing accessories either. I'm not, cause that, that just adds on to the car price. Found a dealer in Alabama. He said, we just sold ours. I said, how much did you sell it for? If you want me asking. He said, we sold it for MSRP. Really? And they said, yeah. The guy just got, they just had it shipped. It sat here for like a couple weeks. The guy just had it shipped um, to somewhere in the East West Coast. He said, he's been calling around different dealers, kind of like the same thing I was doing. And I said, uh, that's unfortunate. But that was, of all dealers, that was the only dealer that, that said they sold it for MSRP. He said they don't mark up their cars. They don't know when another one's coming in. Obviously, production is slowing down. Actually, maybe at this point, it's probably stopped. And I think the, the thrill of the chase has now got me going. So I'm calling more and more dealers, getting the same same instance, 10,000 markup. Uh, I think I called Southern California dealers. Spring Corona had a ton of Type R's. They had probably a bunch. I said, I think maybe four. Four to, I think maybe four to six type R's that they had between blues and limited edition. They had like at least three blue ones, boost blue. They had a, a Phoenix yellow. They had the Sonic gray. I was thinking, okay, these guys are desperate. These cars have been holding, they've been holding on these cars for a while. Check Edmonds. These cars have been sitting on a lot for months. I called him, talked to a uh, lady, one of the internet managers. She's, she's telling me that day they have a $15,000 markup. I said, look, you have that $15,000 markup, but you also have a lot of Type R's. So I know you're in the business to sell these cars. You're not in the business to collect them. Can I buy one of your Type R's for a decent price? She didn't think I was very funny with my joke. She forwarded me over to the manager. Uh, manager talks to me. He says, look, he says, uh, I'll be honest with you. I have orders from um, the higher, I guess is the, the owner of the store, the, that they're firm on that price. They say if I was there in person, they made me a little more flexible. However, they said they just been had bad experiences in the past where someone they give them a low low offer, then someone takes the offer to a different dealer, and then they don't get a sale. I said I totally understand. However, I said I am ready to buy the car today. You give me the car today, you give me the price today, I will buy it. I said you come down to a five thousand dollar markup. I said I will buy that car right now. I will, I would I would jump on a, a flight. I need to do and drive the car back up here and, and buy the car. They did not want to budge unless, like I said, I got there in person. But like I said, last thing I want to do is spend hours there negotiating if it didn't work out and then have to come back home empty handed. That's, if they were local to me, yes, that, I might have did some time to do that. But I'm, like I said, to travel uh, six hours, seven hours to somewhere to see, just to see, is not worth it for me. I've been burned like that before. Um, just when they, they tell you out on the phone, you get there, and then, they, then they, now they feel like they got you there. Now they feel like you're desperate, you're gonna, you're gonna pay anything. So, you know, I'm, I'm not doing that. So I decided just to move on from that one. And I found another one, just ironically in Chicago. And uh, I talked to them and they told me $5,000 markup. I said, okay, well, what's your accessories? They said, no, no accessories. Really? I talked to the general manager. He says, um, I think his name was Jim, he said, no, he says, we don't do, we don't do markup. We don't do markups. We don't do the accessories. He said, he would rather that be on the owner. He says, that's the, if the owner of the car wants to put accessories on it, let them put accessories. He says, there's no point of putting things on the car that somebody might not, might not like. He said, and I said, I totally agree with you. I said, uh, I said, the markup, now you need flexibility. I mean, of course, I'm still going to try to, you know, go, you know, see if there's any more in the room, the wiggle room. But he told me no. He said that's that's the price. He said that's you know five thousand markup is is what it, what it is. He says you know they they've been marking the cars up even that type R's been marked up for for years since it's been out. And I told him I understood that that's that's been a thing. But I also told him I appreciate his honesty with everything. I told him being up front with me that makes a big difference in how we're going to do this transaction, um, and it makes me feel comfortable moving forward knowing that I'm not feeling like I'm getting ripped off. I said uh, if you have the car. Now this dealer was called uh, North City Honda. And like I said, they're Chicago. But like I said, and then I, I told him, I said, now if you have, the, if the car's there, if you're doing the markup, if you don't, if I'll agree to the $5,000 markup, you're not coming down with some other things, write me up with another thing and says, I gotta buy this, I gotta buy that. He says, no, absolutely not. He says, the reason why he says they're marking up also too is because you know the new version is coming out. They don't know when. Also with chip shortage, they don't know how many you're gonna get. The production stopped on these cars. 
you're, you're there may not get another uh, type R for, you know, who knows how long. He says, you're probably looking at metal maybe fall next year for another one. I said, that makes perfect sense. I said, I'll pay the price. I, I, I want the car, I'll pay the price. So here we go, guys. $5,000 markup is what I paid. Um, I felt it was fair out the door um, with taxes and, of course, everything else, California taxes. Um, I'm just probably just under, like I said, it's relevant because it, depending on where you live. But the price they sold me in the car was $44,305. So $44,305 was a car I, I purchased it for. Um, I decided to, to put the $5,000. I put $6,000 down on down payment. I tried to cover my uh, taxes and that's what, that's what I mainly just cover. I covered taxes and I decided to add a little more extra just to cover, um, just because of the markup. I wanna make sure that if I do sell this car later on, I'm not upside down over my head. Um, also, I don't believe in putting a bunch of cash down on the car because if you got a good interest rate, it doesn't matter. I can use that money for other things, invest it for other things and um, it, just, it just seems irrelevant to use that. So I, I agreed to pay the price, I was happy. And there wasn't any time went by where I didn't get any contact. He says, you know what? I'm gonna put you on with my best person, my best salesman. He's gonna take care of you. So they put me on a gentleman named Freddie. Freddie took care of me. He uh, took my deposit and sent me a video of the car, congratulating me on the car. Congratulations, Edward. Here is your 2021 Honda Civic Type R and Bruce Blue. If you have any particular areas you want, please let me know. Congratulations again. And I felt comfortable knowing that, okay, this car is mine. No one else is going to come in and swoop it out for me. They're not going to just come take a higher offer, you know, because. And I was happy. I was, I was happy to have it. Every day went by, they were kept in contact with me. And, he, you know, they... they they said, okay, we need to collect this from you. We need to get this information from you, from your, from your lender. They, were, they didn't seem to be a problem with me using USAA. Um, and I went through it that way. And then guys, it, it was a very smooth transaction. Now, before the car arrived, they said, anything you want us to take any, any videos you want to take a picture of, any pictures you want to see? I said, look, I just want to see a picture of the rims. I want to see a picture of just the front end of the car, make sure there's no scrapes underneath. And that's pretty much it. I said, you know, I know the car is in great condition. So they helped me they, they give me a facetime video they show me everything that the car is getting loaded up on the trailer now the gentleman who picked it up with a shipper that i, I arranged for shipping i paid 1100 dollars in shipping to get it here in california uh the shipping cost um still like i said more than i would even out here i still save about at least five thousand dollars than buying it you know local but uh the, the guy that shipped the car i think they picked it up on that friday and the car was here on monday and um, it was that. So, and then the dealer even followed up with me and they even checked with me to make sure, hey, you got the car, everything's good to go, you're pretty happy. I said, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and even before the car left, the, the manager says, you know, I felt like they cared for the car like I would have. They said, hey, look, this guy who's driving up, we don't think he's feel comfortable. He doesn't think he's feel comfortable driving it up on the ramp, up on a trailer. Can you, do you want us to do it? Do you authorize us to do it? I said, absolutely. You know, so he drove up there and I did it. So I, I should have did it in close, but like I said, I was trying to save some money. I, I said, you know what, you know, you spend this money on everything else, buying out of state, and it's like, all right. Um, but anyway, I'm happy, guys. Um, my payment is just around six, just I think just around six hundred dollars a month um, with everything I put down and everything else. And but I'm happy with it. I got a good interest rate. It'll be a fun daily driver. Um, like I said, I was spending about $600 a month in fuel, so it kind of canceled itself out. And you know, I could have probably saved more money if I kept the SI, but I get something I enjoy, something I, I like to drive. And to be honest with you, driving it the first few days I've driven it, it handles amazing. I can see where the hype is. So I will do another video about that, but if you're interested, want to watch it and want to follow the progress on this car. Um, I'm not going to do like a huge build. I'm not going to do like crazy modifications. 
It's just gonna be nice, clean things to the car, clean aesthetic things. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna change out the reflectors. I might just keep those things orange, just, just to keep it very OEM. Um, I don't know yet. I may, I may do the clear, I don't know. I just feel like, why? You know, like it doesn't, doesn't it's fine. It works just fine the way it is. Um, the wheels, I know some people like to go to the wheels, but I think the, the wheels look great in the car. The, night, the 20 inch wheels look great. I know they're thin, I know the sidewall's thin, but I think they look great. Um, and the suspension, I think it sits low enough for me. So I don't, nothing I really want to do to it, but I am still going to do some things on the car. I'm still making videos on the car. So if you're interested, subscribe. Um, if you don't, you know, you, you don't, but uh, thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, press the like button. Thank you.